Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. Today we're looking at a new release from Springfield Armory called the Ronin 1911 in 10mm. Now they released the Ronin, I would say between 5 and 7 months ago in 45 ACP. They have the government size with the 5 inch barrel, the commander size with the 4 and a quarter inch barrel, and here we have the 10mm that was just released. People who love 10mm would certainly dig this handgun. Kept the same aesthetics and many of the same features, but chambered it in 10 millimeter. And it does come with an eight round magazine and the same look that we have known with the Ronin. Hammer Ford stainless frame and slide, a stainless frame matte finish slide, all Hammer Ford. You can see that the top of the slide has more of a matte black finish, cuts down on the glare. It, shooting in the sunlight and a beautiful look to it laminate grips and it does not have an ambidextrous thumb safety people have varying opinions about that you know a lot of people like it of course lefties like it but other people say i don't want anything to do with a ambidextrous thumb safety so this one definitely does not have that but we do have an unloaded firearm what it does have that we would expect okay here we have a skeletonized trigger but a five pound trigger pull right there which is so nice with 1911s and that's what keeps you on target front serrations fiber optic front sight and an all-metal two-dot serrated black two-dot rear sight. They call this a tactical sight because it has that ledge there. You could charge it off of a belt buckle, a boot, a table, whatever you needed to. Put it right there and charge the gun if your weak side hand is rendered useless for any reason or injured or anything else. But check that out. Flat mainspring housing. All right, and there you have your, your grip safety memory bump right there. Extended beaver tail, skeletonized hammer, five pound trigger, and a beautiful look to it. I like that. I like the way the, the two tone sets off. I know I'm getting a lot of glare there. But it also has a GI style guide rod. What, what that is is a partial length guide rod. And people have their opinions as to which is better. And, and the truth is, a GI style guide rod is the original 1911 that's what that had so it, it has has years of reliability behind it but then they have the full length guide rods that many people know many companies are making 1911s with a full length guide rod one thing you'll notice is that the full length guide rod that cap that goes over the recoil spring is hollowed out so that the guide rod can be seen okay and go through you charge the slide like that over here you won't see that at all Okay, and lock that back there. You won't see a guide rod there. Now, if you look at the cap there, that is serrated black. All right, but the GI style guide rod goes about this big. And some people will have their preferences. I will say that I have not noticed with any 1911 that I've shot a difference between the full length guide rod or the GI guide rod. And I have both. All right, here's another full length guide rod in the 1911. Both these are 45. And then over here we've got 10 millimeter, which I'm having trouble finding ammo for. But I'm going to get this to the range and I can't wait. It's a beautiful looking gun. And the MSRP on this is 849. Now, if you look across the Ronin line, there's actually a whole line now. It was just introduced, but now there's a whole line. They've got Primarily 45s with the government size, the four and a quarter inch commander size, and now the full size five inch barrel, 1911 in 10 millimeter. Laminate grips, they call that the cross cannon grip. Uh, insignia consistent with the Springfield line. Nice engraving there. And a beautiful looking gun, but one would think this is probably heavier because it's built for that 10 millimeter load. So let's check that out. All these are unloaded. I'm pretty sure I showed that, but let's see. The unloaded weight, we're looking at two pounds, seven and one eighth ounce. Let's see, here's one in 45. All right, go ahead and show clear there. And that's actually about two ounces heavier in 45. So we're not seeing a great variance there. How about this one? 
also in 45 this one's actually chambered in 45 super as well two two pounds six and three eighths ounces so a little bit lighter so it's not any heavier the specs themselves are the same so if you have a 1911 form fit holster whether le leather or kydex it'll work just fine with this 10 millimeter model and it is a beauty i think it's very sharp looking and a very nice sight picture as well now the one thing that i've been studying up quite a bit on and i've been thinking a lot about this as we enter the winter months many of us are already in the winter months where we have the winter jackets on you know my just about my whole ccw lifestyle i've been stuffing guns in my pants why not use outside the waistband holsters and so with something like this you know here we have a chance to carry more comfortably outside the waistband we already have cover with the winter jackets and you can use a full-size handgun like this you know two pounds seven and a quarter ounce or whatever and still be comfortable i already have a holster being made up for this multi holsters and i'm looking forward to it and i'm going to give it a try all these people say i carry 1911s and i was never that guy until now i'm going to take this to the range get some good range time make sure it shoots the way i think it's going to shoot and uh i have a good feeling it's going to be great and i'm going to carry it for the experience of carrying a 1911 and i think it's going to be great i think it's going to be fun and i think uh, this range time is going to be a blast if I can get the ammo. I need to do that, and I'll take you guys along to show you how it works. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and you guys be safe.